the laws of physics are mostly equations, things like Maxwell's equations describing electric, electric and magnetic fields, Einstein's equations describing gravity. So they are these very simple and beautiful equations which are in some sense totally precise and really describe what nature does. Somehow nature knew that <laughs> and does what the equations say. And that's something quite unique. There's nothing like that in biology. There's nothing like that in chemistry or anywhere else. In, in the rest of science, you have what we call emergent laws, which are laws which arise out of complicated structures where the details don't matter, but the, the, the structure as a whole has a well-recognizable behavior, like, so for example, the laws of evolution in biology, which uh, you can't write down an equation for evolution but you know what it means. Yeah. And, uh, it tells you roughly how things go when you have a, a, a whole lot of species competing with each other. Yeah. So those are def definitely laws, but they are not in the same category. They are some sort of uh, abstraction arising out of a whole multitude of facts. It's so simple, these equations. I mean, mathematics can be hard, but, but they're, they're simple in terms of they're, they're small. Right. <laughs> yes, they take only two lines to write down. I mean, that is the miracle. This is sort of recent in a way. I mean, in the whole history of science, well, Newton was the first. That came as the sort of the, the overwhelming discovery in the 17th century that you can describe the heavens, at least, and, and the planets and, uh, and the motions of the moon and, and the fall of an apple with one equation, namely Newton's equation. Now, there's another group, generally philosophers, that say, sure, these equations work, but they really don't represent reality. It is just a human intervention imposing on reality some of our constructs that we're never going to get to the real reality. Well, that, of course, that may be true. I mean, we only just came down from the trees, and, and we were mm -hmm. just monkeys who are playing around with things. And, it's amazing how well we are doing, but still, I wouldn't be at all surprised if it turns out that everything we're doing is sort of a, 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 a very, very partial and, and that there's a whole world of existence out there of which we're, we haven't an inkling. And so I wouldn't be at all surprised if our th science in a thousand years looks extremely primitive. I don't regard what we have now as final. Physicists would say that laws are the reality, the most fundamental thing, and therefore we can do away with some kind of an artificial god. Whereas philosophers of religion may say that these laws are uh, indicative of the, of the mind of God. And so people then imbue in these laws some deeper significance. Yes, well, of course, I'm not a philosopher. I mean, if you wanted to say what I am, I would say I'm a dualist in a way. That I think there is a physical world and there is a mental world, and they're very different. And we understand the physical world extremely well. We understand the mental world hardly at all. And of course, all these questions about God and about it, the nature of consciousness and so on, these belong to the mental world. And uh, I, I don't think we're close to understanding them. Einstein sort of uh, uh, was the prototype of a scientist who sort of worshipped nature as his god and he thought of the laws of physics as sort of being in some sense the god that he worshipped and, and the, the majesty of the universe he saw in the laws of physics. Mm. I, don't quite, I don't go along with that. I mean, I think the, the laws of physics are fine as far as they go. There's no reason to imagine that that's all there is. Mm. And we have certainly a lot of evidence that there are mental things which are outside the, the, the scope of physics, but we don't have the tools really to grasp them. I prefer that the laws are independent, that the mental world has its own autonomy, but then, of course, that's my prejudice. <laughs> God may turn out to disagree with me, as he often has in the past. And,